Beamer on the number two machine. And then just behind the two of them, it is the 13 of Taylor Robert out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Lots of talent among these youngsters, talent that we're going to see on the bigger bikes, up to the lights division, into Supermoto, and perhaps even Unlimited. But on this day, it was Jamie Seaver from Kansas who led Brandon Dooley also from Kansas across the line. Then Tyler Valentine, all three better have brought a truck because they'll be taking home the bike they rode and the gear they were wearing. Let's hear from the man who ended up in first. Uh, I got second the first year, and I've been wanting to win ever since. And last year, I wanted to win so bad I crashed. So it feels real good to get on top of the podium now. So now uh, you get to keep all this equipment. How are you getting your bike home? A topper, and we're just going to lay it on its side and tie it down. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works. Take that bike home. And Jamie Seaver, a very fast young man, we expect to hear more from him. A little more course maintenance going there on the Urban Cross Jump. Race two coming up. Race number two, and it's all on the line. The AMA Supermoto Championship, that is, here in Reno for Supermoto a go-go. It is Jeff Ward with a comfortable lead in points, but uncomfortable in that they are awarding double points for this final race. And Robbie Floyd, that means that Jeff Ward's job is well, it's difficult, but not impossible by any means. No, his his job is almost done. Jurgen Kunzel would have to have a near miracle to win the championship, but weird things happen. We saw what happened to Daryl Atkins last turn, last race of the year. He lost his championship, but I'm not counting that to happen to Ward. I mean, he's been so consistent throughout the year. Inside the top 15 should get it done. Even if Jurgen Kunzel wins the race, Jeff Ward would be the champion. And he gets the whole shot. Jeff Ward isn't going to leave anything to chance. He's going right out front and attacking it from the very beginning. Kunzel is right there behind him in second spot, and Mark Burkhardt, winner of race number one, sits his third. Well, third for a second. It looks like he's back in. Oh, no, look at Kunzel. How bad did he want that? Burkhardt made the pass, but Kunzel ran it in there extra deep. This kind of reminds me of motocross, and Jeff Ward's playing the part of Ricky Carmichael right now. Just what the rest of the field didn't want to see. That number one of Ward out there, because very seldom does he lose one or even two positions throughout the race. So Ward is out front right now, doing a lot more than he has to do, which is again about 14th position should get it done for the championship. Burkhart, while running third and having won race number one, will not take points away from the championship contender. So it really is 50 points for the winner of this one and 44 points for second position. It goes on down from there. Remember, Wardy beat Kunzel in the first race. He's looking to do the, the same here. It's that same monkey wrench of Mark Burkhart on the Graves Yamaha. He has a fast bike. The same one that Doug Henry had until he was injured and look at that in the inside and just like Burkhardt said those Dunlops are very sticky here <laughs> it didn't sound like a commercial what he was doing out there but he proved it right there that inside line held very true. So Mark Burkhardt has now gone past Jurgen Kunzel this is what it looked like uh, it, it just dives the inside look at that, that little chatter there's a little hump in the road that, that's where the motocross skills really help you. On road racing services, they don't see that much inconsistency. But these are city streets. You expect stuff like that. You might pop a wheelie where you have to here and there. But th this is a city course. Expect out of the ordinary stuff out there. Maybe brick transitions or potholes or manholes. Aaron Yates, you know, talk about something different. is seeing Aaron Yates out here in Supermoto going up against Kunzel and Warden the Bunch. Well, his road racing season is done. His AMA Superstock Championship is already sitting on the mantle at home. So Aaron Yates decided to come out and do what he's always done. Have some fun, battle, fight, ride, have just enjoy himself. And he puts his knee on the ground where most guys <laughs> are sticking their feet out. You've called hundreds of his races before. You can see his riding style a little different, the way his body positioning is. How would you how would you say he is as a rider? Road racing is different than motocross, but what's his mental attitude at each race? Well, just pure determination. This man is a warrior, Aaron Yates. Body position He's probably not thinking about that. <laughs> He's just got his chin out, his eyes focused about four spots up the racetrack, and all he wants to do is get past the guy right in front of him. But you can see how, how the way he grips the bike a little bit farther back. The, his back's not bent, but he has some moto skills, too, much like the Bostroms and the Haydens. They ride moto. They, they're in the dirt a lot. Aaron Yates rides everything back home in Milledgeville, Georgia. If it's got wheels and an engine, he's going to go out there and see what it'll do. David Boffalo just behind him, number 23 on the KTM, a series regular. But I am impressed with Yates. I mean, uh, road racers do fairly well, but not as good as he's doing as we see Burkhart. Oh, look at this. 
Jeff Ward, huge problem. We didn't right. see him come around, but we didn't know what was going on. Ward has run off the track and at least stole the motorcycle, if not tipped over. We don't see a lot of evidence of having what? crashed, but he can't start it. That's worse. What place did you say 14th? I mean, right now I'm seeing riders just keep passing him. And Jurgen Kuzel is in the possibility of a championship right now. If Kuzel stays in second and Wardy drops out of that 15 spot, Kuzel's going to win this thing if Wardy can't get it fired. Oh, and now he's getting a little bit of help, uh, outside help, from a couple uh -oh. of guys at the side of the racetrack. And if the officials saw it, that is going to be a major no-no. But Jeff Ward knows he has to get going again if he has any chance of winning this title. And that's what he did. Welcome back to Supermoto Agogo and a major, major development in the championship as number one Jeff Ward looked like he was cruising to a second consecutive title. Something happened. He ran off the track, fell over, couldn't get the bike restarted after it stalled and has all but handed the championship to Jurgen Kunzel, who is now unchallenged really for, for the title. Kunzel sits in second, Mark Burkhardt out in front, and you touched on something before we went to break. I mean, he has to come inside the top 15 to secure that championship. He's in 20th right now. Can he make up those five positions? But there's that, another thing, that outside assistance. I've seen it before. You get help from outside and, and getting that bike started, I think the AMA will have something to say about that. But for now, the AMA will stand aside and just allow this race to continue. If they're going to make a call, it'll be after the race is over. Mark Burkhardt just looking so stylish on his Yamaha. He has competed in 450 races in the past, but this season he's one for one. He earned a victory in the only 450 race he contested in 2005, and that was race number one here today. Aaron Yates is really impressing me. I mean, racing with these supermoto regulars. I mean, road racers aren't supposed to just go out there and look that fast. Well, although he did have problems. With it. When he starts getting the seesaw going, that's not a good thing. He doesn't care. In fact, even when he is road racing, he turns almost every track into part asphalt and some dirt. <laughs> he likes to run off on the edges every once in a while. There's some inside knowledge right there, huh? Oh, but, Aaron Yates is a battler. He's taking different lines, and look how close he's getting into Cassie Anderson. He's taking different lines. He's not settling for a top five. He's still trying to win this, even though there's a big gap in front of him. Look at that. He's outside where I don't think he wants to make that pass. Well, we talked about body position. He doesn't care about that. We're talking body English here. He's in full attack mode. Elbows out, chin forward. Aaron Yates is going for it out there. Don't tell him he's never done this before or not much. Look at the way he's on the bike, though. I mean, that is so road race right there. I mean, gripping with that leg. It, but it's different seeing him do that on this motocross bike because you see a lot of guys that transfer in there. Even though they have the road racing tires, the road tires, you see the motocross styles, but obviously it's working. Kevin Schwantz the same way. When he tries it every now and then, he just looks so much different on the bike. Aaron Yates going in there, and it looked like he gave the rider behind him an opportunity to make the pass. They just crossed the line, blocked it off. Here's Mark Burkhart. He's the leader, coming up into traffic already, lapping all the way up to uh, currently a 19th position, Dan Jeanette. So Burkhart really getting it done, unwinding these uh, riders on a course that takes well over a minute to go all the way around. And how about Graves Motorsports and the Yamaha team and Factory Yamaha putting that effort behind Mark Burkhart in the Supermoto lights, now giving him the opportunity here in the 450s. And Red Bull KTM, their rider, this is the Red Bull Supermoto and Go-Go. I don't think that Kurt Nickel really thought that there was a shot that they had a chance at the championship. Right now, their shot is looking more probable than possible. Well, Jurgen Kunzel has to know that Jeff Ward had a problem because Kunzel was behind him on the racetrack. We'll be back with more. The 2005 AMA Supermoto Agogo season finale has been brought to you by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. By Yamaha, now celebrating 50 years as the world's motorsports leader. And by the Reno Tahoe area, America's adventure place. Mark Burkhardt inherited the lead from Jeff Ward's misfortune. He took the lead in race number one, so who's to say that he wouldn't have done it again? He gets the signal from 
The left rider, Dan Jeanette, there to move on by, and that's how big a gap there is back to second place. Here comes Jurgen Kunzel, who could care less about being in second place right now because he's first in the championship. He has to know that Jeff Ward is way behind him for one thing and got some outside assistance for another. Surely his pit crew has signaled him, just keep it on two wheels, you'll bring home a championship. Yeah, they'll cross a certain section of the track and you'll see the pit boards out. They'll usually give you, you know, P1, P3, telling you what place you are, and then the gap you have over the rider behind you. They're probably showing like Ward out, Ward down, keep it on two wheels, think straight. All those, all those signs are actually benefiting Jurgen Kunzel right now when you thought that there was no way he was going to win this championship, that Jeff Ward was just going to have another consistent top three or five finish. Wardy had to finish outside the top 15, Brent. I don't think he's ever done it in a race that he's actually finished. But listen, how cool is this? That the defending champion needs a 14th place finish to take the title. He's up to 14th on the racetrack right now as he went around uh, Justin Ross, the number 319. That moved him into 14th spot so he continues to do what he has to do, what he thinks he has to do. He just doesn't know what's going to happen at the end of this race. Did anybody in the AMA see him get that out of outside assistance? Uh, the American Motorcycles Association is going to be, I, I promise you, they're going to have something to say about that. If Gordy would have got the bike started on his own power, all is good. You know, he's still in this thing, but I think that little push-off, no matter how slight, that's going to kill him. Mark Burkhardt is already signaling to the crowd that he is going to be the winner of this race. He goes two for two, does the double here in Reno at the Supermoto Agogo, takes both checkered flags for as race winner, does not take any points away from the championship contenders. Instead, it is going to be this man, number five, Jurgen Kunzel, who comes by with a rather benign victory salute there, considering he has just earned the championship. And the third place finisher is going to be Kurt Nickel. He knew. Kurt Nickel knew. Did you see him pumping his fist? Warty, I'm not sure, but I mean, gosh. I mean, that, that's two championships coming down to the last race. Daryl Atkins, the New Zealander, lost the championship when it looked like he had it won going into the last turn. And here going into the last photo of the last event, Jeff Ward was in position. And you, I, everybody else in Reno thought he had won this championship, but... I don't know. Bad, bad things happen. Man plans, God laughs. Misfortune struck Jeff Ward and prevented him from winning a title, but he soldiers on to finish the race well within a position that under normal circumstances would have earned him the title. We don't think it's going to happen here today, and neither does he. Uh, he's shaking his head. He knows right now. He's like... Thumbs up, but I mean, his heart is in his stomach right now because he knows he just lost the championship. There's Kurt Nickel, he's the boss. <laughs> and he seems to be a little more excited than Jurgen Kunzel. And now he's telling Kunzel, I think, who had just turned a deaf ear to anything but finishing this race. Jurgen Kunzel probably cannot believe that he has just earned the title of Red Bull Supermoto champion. Let's take a look at the results. Mark Burkhardt had a perfect season. I'm not talking about just here this weekend with the two wins in the 450s, the AMA Supermoto. No losses in the Supermoto light. I mean, good things to come in 06 for Burkhardt. As we take a look at the results, the AMA has indeed made their call and disqualified Jeff Ward for the championship. 2005 AMA Supermoto champion. You, you have ridden long and hard. You're hard on yourself. And here you are, we never see you smiling like this. Here you are, the champion. Yeah, I don't know. It's really, I, I, when I finished the race, my mechanic showed me you won it, but I don't know that I won the, the, the championship here. But I, I, don't, I don't know what I can say now. I'm so happy. I'm so, so happy. We go out for a party, and then I think after this go better. I made a mistake and went by the little urban jump, and uh, instead of going down, I let Burkhardt go by. And, I just stayed behind him, and then I hit a hay bale, and it kicked out, and I fell. I figured, okay, I'll just keep it running. wasn't too panicked because I knew what I had to do, and then well, I picked it up. It stalled, so I still wasn't panicked because they start first kick, second kick usually, and it wouldn't start. I just kicked it and kicked it and kicked it, and it just wouldn't go, so I just started pinning out, and then I was freaking out, and then once it got going, I still you know, thought I had a chance to catch up, but it was just too big a gap. A reversal of fortune for Jurgen Kunzel, who becomes the titleist in the last race of the season here in 2005. 
And our congratulations to Jeff Ward, a great champion whose reign is now over. For Robbie Floyd and Rebecca Staub, I'm Brian Drever. We'll see you next time.